Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I am Malcolm Ash, and I'm finally getting back to my RPG in a Box development project, which is a Project Spectrum game. Project Spectrum being an IP that I have created in order to share with everybody to use as they see fit. Um, working out the details, trying to pick a license that's right for it, but basically it's a group of travelers of aliens called the Spectra. Each one represents a different color in the Bob Ross color palette. There are 13 total, and each one has a distinct role in their exploration operation as these things tend to go, and they go out and discover different planets. Well, really what happens is their planet became unlivable and thousands upon thousands of crews were assembled to send out into space as that planet became destroyed. And the crews, each one of these games, picks up the story of a different, unique Spectra crew. So while the archetypes of the characters are always the same, and the names of the characters are always the same, it's always a different story that's playing out. So while this is inspired quite a bit, from the uh, by the SGB version of the Project Spectrum game. This is going to be its own game, its own right, and um, none of these will have to be played in any order. You can play any of them if you're interested in that sort of thing, and you can make your own. So, this is going to be created using all only RPG in a box assets and using RPG in a box scripts, obviously. The end goal here is to create. 11 maps. We'll have nine in a grid. We'll have one that is accessible from the center, which will be the ship. It'll be our one of two interior maps. All of the rest will be exterior outside maps. Not that that really matters. And then the final map, the 11th map, is the sort of end game, uh, the place where the end of the game happens. And it's going to be a place unique from the nine maps. So if I zoom out, our hub would actually be right here in the grand scheme of things, and each map adjacent to it and diagonal to it would be the other maps. Uh, that's they're, they're going to go on their own. That they'll be in their own map files. This is this is not going to be all together here, but that's basically where they're positioned. So it's my goal to have warps to and from those other maps and to create this sort of world as a playground before I get too far into making the scripts and the other things that will go into it to really flesh it out, dialogue included. So what I've done is I've created some stuff, I did a little bit of it on camera, and then I decided that that wasn't as good as what I'm going to show you now to just kind of summarize what I did, and then we'll push forward and take a look at some scripts to get these things connected. And my vlog series will kind of be a mix of things I'm discovering right now in front of you, uh, and then I can ask for help if there seems to be in a blockage in the way that I do things, or I will create a bunch of monotonous stuff and then present it to you later. So we're, we're kind of doing both right now. I'm going to show you the uh, voxel tiles that I've made. Very, very simple just to get things going, very prototypical. We have Cave, Cave 2, and Cave 3 voxel uh, tiles. I keep saying they're tiles. Dirt, Dirt 2 with some rock placement, and Dirt 3 with less rock placement. Grass, Grass 2, and Grass 3 with varying amounts of vegetation. Uh, I had another one for hub, but that ended up not being necessary, so I can actually delete that one. Please save and close the resource before proceeding. Okay, uh, I have four, two, three, four, five maps at this point, so let me show you these maps. Oh, no, I did more. I did snow. Snow, snow two, and snow three. Why did I put flowers in the snow? That is for a specific game reason, and we'll check that out. A little later. For now, all of my tiles are opened up in these tabs, which I actually really like because I can go revisit them whenever I like and make edits and changes. I discovered while I was creating these tiles, if I have the marching cubes mesh selected, by default it says apply marching cubes at grid boundaries. 
and when I look at the map, the marching cubes effect is applied. It's not applied here in the preview, but when I look at the map, it's applied, and I can change that pretty dynamically as well. So if I change this to marching cubes and then save it, and then go to my map editor, I've got my hub map, which I decided to put tiles down just as placeholders. This is where I want the warps to be. I've got my dirt map, which you can see all of the green lines. I would like to toggle those off. There we go. There we go. That's what's up. And then I've got my cave map. Uh, and you can see that cave two tile was the one that I edited and now it has the marching cubes applied to it. Not just to the edges, but to the interior of the tile as well. So look at that. It is, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's applied, let's move that. It's applied sort of a bevel along the cutouts and my uh, my coloration is still there. I guess it's it's um, being treated as something different. It's just planes instead of 3D objects. So we'll go back and we'll um, not apply the marching cubes at the grid boundaries and we'll save that. And when we go back to the map editor, now they just look like this, the boundary is now seamless because the marching cubes effect is no longer there. However, I wondered if I go to my voxel editor and I I just have the classic for this, we'll save it. I don't need that to have marching cubes. Most of that map is made up of the cave one tile. If I turn marching cubes on for that and then save it, what will that look like? just everything will have rounded edges. That's kind of cool because it kind of will work for interior tiles, I think very well, like um, kitchen tiles, things like that. I'm sure that it has a ton of other uses as well. For now, I will turn that off for that particular tile. So I didn't learn a whole lot, I just did a lot of monotonous tasks, but I did learn that and um, I did develop a workflow and I got a little bit more comfortable navigating the engine, display ambient occlusion. Yes, that'd be awesome, thank you. What's this one? Display surface edges, okay, that's nice. I don't have to do that, I guess. Preview the game mesh. I'm gonna turn that off. It'll show you the saved version of it, okay. That's cool, that's really cool, I love that. Okay, now, back to the map editor. The cave, the snow map, which is supposed to look just as bleak as all get out, Oh, did I, uh, did I turn marching cubes on for you? Let's turn those off and save you. Go back to the snow map. That's better. That's a lot better. And then the ship. The ship, all I did here was I put a pathway and I'm gonna put a warp right here. So now that I've shown you my scripts and my tiles, my scripts, now that I've shown you my maps and my tiles, let's try to make a, a warp here. Um, We want to create a script and place it here. So if we edit, right click, scripting, we can add a quick script. And this is the first time that I have exposed myself to this part of the engine. Uh, we have available function, available logic, which I don't need. We need available functions and we can enter a keyword, which is extremely useful. And I think load map is the one that we want. That's our warp. There we go. And we can view the full documentation on this, or we can just add it. And it's, it seems our script is valid right away. So it's really cool that it can do that. Now, how do I get it on there? I just drag it and drop it. Awesome. Amazing. Validate and it's okay. Now we can hit OK and the script is there. Um, 
I need to customize that script though. I need to do that in node form, which is what I'm just what I'm comfortable with. It doesn't appear as though I can switch to that view here. But that's okay. We can edit the script directly in the script editor and it will appear as a node. Is that right? No, it's not there. That's interesting. What if I save this map and then go to the script editor? Nope, it does not show me this script. Uh, so I have to give a shout out to 8 Pancakes for Lunch, Jason, who helped me with a really, really cool tip. The one that I'm going to utilize now. I'm going to go to the ship. No, we're going to go to the hub which is a grassy area where your ship has landed and we'll copy uh, this, copy that XYZ coordinate and go back to the script editor. I really wish I could edit that, but I guess this is only for, I guess this is only for map or for uh, what you might consider common events, right? You can access them to get to the map script. You're going to have to get to the map. So we've copied this X, Y, Z coordinate. We go back to the ship. Let's remove the script that's there. And let's add, we can assign an existing script, which would mean our, yep, it's our, um, I can only change it. I gotcha. All right, so let's just add a quick script and we'll do it that way. We'll get accustomed to that. We're going to add the load map. And then I guess, will that replace that for us? No, it won't replace us. I'll have to be very careful about the syntax there. But I don't want to bog up my custom or my, uh, my common event folder, so to speak, you know. Uh, hub is the name isn't it? Yeah, it's just hub. It is with a capital H, so we'll see if that's valid. We're going to save that and quick play. Uh, what needs to be saved? The hub needs to be saved. What else needs to be saved? The dirt map needs to be saved. And the script editor, the script that I have hanging out in there needs to be saved. I love that I can see the asterisks. So, beginning planet in a box, I am, whoa, 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 whoa. I am Thalo Blue. I really need to make those walls impassable. Thalo Blue, exit. Exit the map. Map hub does not exist. Okay, so lowercase, lowercase does not work. That's our, that's our malfunction. Back to the map editor. Back to hub, ship hub. Edit the quick script and just call this hub the capital H instead. Okay, that's better. Uh, let's save this map as ship instead of ship hub to eliminate confusion. And we'll get rid of we'll get rid of its uh, copy here. Um, but I do need to go to the script editor and go to my startup and change that to ship. And now that I've done that, save that script. I don't need this warp to hub script. In fact, I can delete that because I'm not gonna have a common event that warps me to one place, bogging up my common event folders. And I'll also delete that. All right. Feeling pretty good about what we've got going on here. Let's uh, quick play again. So I have managed to warp to the correct map this time. Awesome. Beautiful. Love that. All right. Now, now that we've done that, let's do a warp back. Uh... All of this is child's play, by the way. 
it is all just child's play. Scripting. Uh, we need to know on the ship what these coordinates are. Hub. Hubba hubba. The engine, I feel... Wait. You mean the link with map? Is that what I need to do? I don't know what that means exactly. It will allow me to link with the ship. But I don't get it. Negative zero, negative three, zero. I didn't put those coordinates in. What happens if I test play this? If I save it and I test play it? What else? What else did I... Will it just start me off there? Is that is that one of the convenient shortcuts? Yes. Oh my god, that is so convenient. Thank you, Justin. All right. Awesome. Obviously these tiles are placeholders as I mentioned there there will be like a a ship here with a door and that's where that event will take place and it'll make a lot more sense in that context. Wow, that's cool. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us now go to the dirt map. And we've got only one way in and out of this map, and that is the hub. And that's going to be... Here. That's going to represent our hub, even though we should start here. I guess we will start here, actually. So we'll, uh, we'll replace that with dirt tile and the cave map, which will start here and the snow map, which will start here. I was going to say, why is there Z fighting it just shows up that Z fighting just shows up in some places. But when I set the tile down, everything's fine. Everything is just hunky-dory. There was no Z fighting there because the tile was replacing the tile underneath it. Okay. So having done that, we should be able to set our warps now pretty quickly, right? So we will um, right-click this in edit mode. Copy its coordinates. And then go to the hub. And I can link you with the dirt map. How did you know? How did you know that that's what I wanted to do? And if I go to the dirt map, what does this do now? What does this say? Edit the quick script. It's just there. It's just there. So is it because of the coordinates that you copy? So... If I right click this, copy the coordinates, go back to the hub and just right click this and link with map, snow map appears on there now. And then here, this would allow me to, I can link this to the hub, but uh, you shouldn't know, you shouldn't know where in the hub I want to go, right? You wouldn't know that. You don't show up, however, as, as an option from this map. So, okay, we'll copy the coordinates and we'll go to the cave map, right click and link with map hub. I think, I think that this has accomplished what I needed it to like way faster than I thought it would. I was going to make some suggestions, but if this does what I think it does, there will be no need for any of my suggestions. So this should bring me outside. I really need to adjust my start space to be like right above this door. And I already have tested that. I, I know where that brings me. This will bring me to the snow place. Dumps me out right on the tile. When I go back, 
I'm back there. Awesome. Amazing. Cave. Awesome. Amazing. Fantastic. Really, really cool. Really cool. Fast map linking. That's incredible. Okay. <sighs> That's a big win. That is a huge win. That actually that actually completes my task for today. I just wanted to make the maps, the new tiles, and link them all together. And I have now done that. I have five maps that are all linked. That's amazing. Hot dog. That is cool. Okay. So now I can... What is that? Why is that flower all the way up there? Get rid of that. Why is that there? Why did I put that there? Now I can continue making maps which I can I can do that off camera how am I going to make this ship uh, I had a left wing with quarters I had a right wing with quarters and I had the center of the ship where there was a control room I think I think I can do the same thing here so we had I'll just I'll just destroy whatever I've done here. Uh, whoops, we don't wanna do that though. Don't wanna do that. Start that here, I guess, right? And another wall here. And that's kind of what we want, but on both sides. It's a pretty simple design. Not amazingly complex by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so we have basically research, hall, quarters one, control room, quarters two, I think engineering, and then like um, where the escape pods and things are maintenance I think that was the ship layout it's a very small ship like it's it's pretty big I guess it's the size of a oh I don't know a large gas station <laughs> but it um People are like, I've never been in a gas station like this, Ash. What are you talking about? But it has escape pods and things in it, too. It's just when it lands, it's not going to make much of an impression. It itself is, after all, kind of an emergency escape vehicle. Now that I've done that, I need walls. Um, I have inner corner walls. That'll work perfectly fine. I guess I did prepare for that. Which feels good. It feels good that I was able to make some sense of my plan before I even really had it. And use these for the called that inner corner. I think those are considered outer corners. Maybe. And attach these to all of the hallways. All right. Um, I need to change these walk types somehow. Not like this, though. Not like this. Actually, can I make it to where you can't crawl on the wall? I'll worry about that later. I'll worry about that later. For now, this is the ship wall. This is the other corner. And um, that'll work, yeah. We'll place one down in the lower left-hand corner of every room. 
just like that. One in the upper right hand corner of every room. I've already missed one, I see. Don't worry about it. Upper left and right. And lower right hand corner. Doing things a bit convoluted, maybe. But at the end of the day, I want the framework to facilitate fast creation. That's what I'm after. Ship wall? Yes, we can do ship wall, just like that. Fills in the blanks perfectly. This is going to be a fine ship. A fine ship. And we can fill in the right sides of every hall and every room this was made very easy for me hey what did I do I did something accidentally I borked the passage settings I'm not sure how I did that I'll uh I'll have to revisit I mean that's good that's technically what I want right there but um You know, I need to know what I did so I don't do it by accident when I don't mean to do it, is the thing. Now we can do the tops of these rooms. And flesh out the corners of the other guy, the other rooms. And the right side of whatever's missing there. Oh, all I did was click and drag. And it started to create box style, but what happened is it took away the linkage on that side. I could see that being a thing that happens accidentally every once in a while. In this case, it didn't hurt anything. It actually helped it. And finally, right there. And I think that completes all of my rooms, just their skeleton of them. So that's wonderful. Now I can decorate things just a little bit with some lighted pathway. And use an X for that one. Lighted pathway, here we go. Uh, probably use regular ship floor for this room, however. And I am definitely going to need doors and I'm definitely going to need a tile that's got the wall and then like a separation on one side unless I've already got that I don't think I have that I don't think I have that I can make that though I could probably make that right now right so we want this but then we want a protrusion right here uh, so easy peasy, we'll just drop her this and add the tiles all the way up, all the way over, and then should be able to just do that. I honestly think it's that easy. Let's save that as uh, ship wall door frame should be that simple and we'll go back to the hub map and I need to add these ship wall door frame I need to add it here 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 and here here and here here and here that is lovely. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Okay. So right here would have been a mistake. Let's correct that really quick. We'll, we'll get the, uh, we'll get our corner back. Soon as I can find the correct corner. That's it right there. There we go. And there you have it. Uh, this is the work in progress of the ship upon which story begins to take place. 
edit mode, get rid of that guy, goodbye, thank you for your service. And that concludes the time that I have for this video. Lots of map designing, uh, well, not really a lot, some, some playing catch up, some creating tiles for maps. Um, and I only spent about half an hour doing all of that stuff off camera. So the total time that I have now spent on creating this game is uh, the total time of this video and the last video plus 30 minutes. And this is the point that I'm at now. Could I prototype this faster in another engine? Only ones that I am very familiar with. I'm still getting familiar with this one, but I think it speaks leagues that I'm at a point now where I feel comfortable enough to make these maps and make these tiles that can interconnect in such a way that they create walls, three dimensionality. So very happy with this, very happy. I'm, I'm very pleased with myself at my, my small, humble ship. Um, and I can't wait to fill out these rooms and flesh them out with stuff. Um, one of my favorite characters is Dr. Sap, and her lab is right here. She is very kooky. Then Titanium White's control room is here, and uh, you'll start out here in these quarters. Might branch them off. This does look a little bit different than my SGB map, but that's okay. I really just wanted to have this sort of confined feel. And then this is the exit to the ship, of course. So. That's it. Out of time. Thank you very much for watching my devlog number two. Please stay tuned for the next one. I'm going to try to make sure it doesn't take as long to get to it. Uh, I've been super busy, but I'm finally getting through all of the stuff that I've been busy with and getting it off my plate. And that feels really, really nice because it's like I got a surge of busyness and I actually rode that wave, surfed it. And uh, I don't know how to surf, but I didn't wipe out. So... That's enough about that. I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye for now.